Hello friends, it's Miss Adaria. Welcome to another story time for the, from the Bridgeton Public Library here in Bridgeton, New Jersey. Uh, today we're going to be reading about magic ramen. You know, ramen noodles. It's about the history and the gentleman that actually invented ramen noodles. Wow, I can't wait to get into this book and maybe afterwards you can go and have a bowl of ramen noodles with your family. Doesn't that sound awesome? <laughs> ah, so, Magic Ramen, the story of Momofuku Ando. It was written by uh, Andrea Wang, and it was illustrated by Kana Ubanowitz. Yes, I pronounced it correctly. And he dedicated it to, uh, Andrea Wang dedicated it to her son Bennett, and Kana indicate uh, dedicate it for all the noodle lovers so i know that that's me and i'm i'm hoping that that's you too so here's the story momofuku ando picked his way through the rubble on his way home from let me just make sure i didn't yeah that is the first page momofuku ando picked his way through the rubble on his way home from work jumps right in doesn't it even though world war ii had ended over a year ago much of Osaka, Japan, still lay in ruins. And that was probably around 1946, because World War II ended in 1945. Across the street, a long line of people wound down the sidewalk. It was winter, and they shivered in their ragged clothes, which means their clothes weren't keeping them warm enough. What are they waiting for? Ando wondered. At the head of the line, billows of steam rose from a shack. Inside, a man was selling ramen noodle soup. Bad harvests, rationing, and the war had made food scarce, meaning that there wasn't too much food around for people. The poor ate grass and bark to survive. Orphans scrounged through garbage for something to eat. Those lucky enough to have some money waited for hours and paid outrageous prices for a meager bowl of ramen soup. Huh. Ando went home, but he couldn't forget the hungry people. The world is peaceful only when everyone has enough to eat, he realized. Ando decided that his food, that food, would be his life's work. He started a business making salt. He caught and dried fish. He created nutritious for food for people who were sick. With every new product, every new job, and every new business, Ando thought about the line of starving people. He thought about them for over 10 years. Then one of Ando's business deals ended badly. He was penniless. Once again, Ando remembered the hungry people. Wouldn't it be wonderful, he thought, if whole families could have noodles whenever they wanted? No more waiting on line in the cold. No more high prices. No more empty stomachs. He dreamed about a new kind of ramen. His ramen wouldn't be like other noodles. It would be more nutritious. And, and so in a shed in his backyard, Ando mix flour, salt, and water together. So please excuse me, when I started the story, I said he was the one who created ramen noodles. He's the one who created a different kind of ramen noodles. So I just want to, the facts to be straight. <laughs> so there he is in his shed making ramen noodles. He's flour, salt, and water, right? Then he added eggs. Then he added a little powdered milk. He even added spinach. Mmm, I love spinach. Like Popeye. Oh. Nothing worked. The noodles were too crumbly, or too sticky, or too lumpy. But you have to keep working when you're, when you're experimenting on something. You have to keep going until you get it right. He kept experimenting with different ingredients. One day, he cranked the handle of his noodle making machine and tested the noodles that came out. They didn't crumble, stick, or lump. It was just the right amount, uh, just the right mix of ingredients. Ando realized 
the key to the preparation of food is balance. All right. All right, Ando. I can't wait to see what he's going to do with these noodles. But what was ramen without soup? Ando remembered that the cold and hungry people, chicken soup warmed up the cold bodies, but took hours to make. His ramen would be tasty and easy to cook. The simple addition of hot water would release the flavor from the noodles and turn it into a hot chicken soup. So he was thinking and thinking, how do I get the chicken flavor in there? He wants to make all the people with the hungry bellies happy. So he kept experimenting. He used chicken soup to make the dough. He brushed seasoning on the noodles. He dipped the noodles into soup. Once again, nothing worked. The noodles were too brittle, which means they broke really easily, or too soft, or too soggy. Ugh. Nothing worse than a soggy noodle, I tell you. He kept experimenting with different methods. One day he sprinkled noodles with soup from a watering can, and he tossed and separated them, and the noodles soaked up the soup and dried. It was just the right procedure. The watering can distributed the liquid evenly. He added hot water to the dried noodles and stirred. The water now tasted like soup. Wow, Ando, that was really clever. So you can imagine all the flavors from the soup broth sprinkled onto the noodles, and this is what he's imagining, that it tastes like all these wonderful ingredients that you would put into a chicken soup. Turn the page there, okay. But the noodles were too tough. Ah, oh, it's always something. They still had to be cooked on a stove. Ando remembered the tired and hungry people. He wanted his ramen to be fast and convenient. It could be made with hot water and in a few minutes. People should be able to make it anywhere, anytime. Day after day, Ando experimented. Night after night, he failed. Month after month, he kept trying and nothing worked. Oh, I hope he makes it. I have a feeling that he did make it. One day, Ando watched his wife, Masako, fry tempura. She coated the vegetables with sea and seafood in batter and dropped them into hot oil. The water in the batter evaporated and left tiny holes in the crunchy coating. He stared at the tempura. The batter was made from flour and water, just like his noodles. I could hear the wheels of his brain start turning. Yatta! He cried. That's it! He raced to his shed and he threw some noodles into a pot of hot oil. They sizzled and popped and crisped. And he scooped the fried noodles out of the oil and into a bowl. Then he added hot water and waited. The water seeped into the tiny holes and softened the noodles. His wife is like, what's happening? So wait, maybe his wife is the one who discovered ramen, the way of making these ramen noodles. <laughs> Does she get any credit? I don't know. We'll find out. Two minutes later, he plunged a pair of chopsticks into the bowl. He stirred and slurped. The noodles were tender and chewy. They floated in a bowl of hot and tasty soup. Mmm! After a year of trying, Ando had finally done it. He invented instant ramen! Wah! Look at all the cherry blossoms. Sakura, they call them in Japanese. Beautiful! His chickens are enjoying. And he's so happy he invented instant ramen. Ando worked hard to make enough instant ramen to sell. The whole family pitched in. Masako, Suma, Koki, and, Le and even little Akemi. See, they're putting it into the bags. He gave demonstrations and poured hot water. He waited two minutes. Maho no ramen, the astonished customers explained. And that meant magic ramen. They couldn't believe it. They were seeing it, the meal happening right before their very eyes in two minutes with just some hot water. Soon, everyone was eating Ando's ramen. Poor people, children, busy workers, even royalty. The king doesn't want us to see him eating ramen. He turned his back. See all those happy people eating ramen? 
and it probably was very uh, cost effective to make, so he probably didn't charge too much. So he, the poor people could definitely afford to have a hot bowl of soup. Ando's ramen was nutritious, tasty, and convenient. Thin, cold, tired, and hungry people ate it and felt better. Ando smiled. Peace follows from a full stomach, he said. Ever since, Mo Momofuku Ando and his backyard invention have fostered peace one bowl of noodles at a time. Doesn't this make you want to run to your mom or dad or your grandma and say, make me some ramen? Yes, what a great book. Woo, magic ramen. So just going from ramen to music, just because, that's what we're gonna do. So uh, this is a wonderful book. It's called Because. Um, who wrote it was Mo Willems. You must be familiar with Mo Willems. He, he writes all those wonderful books. And uh, it was illustrated by Amber Wren. And it's called Because. This is how it happened. Let's just get to that first page. All right. Because a man named Ludwig wrote beautiful music, a man named Franz was inspired to create his own. Who do you think they're talking about, Ludwig? Von Beethoven, of course, yeah. Because many years later, people wanted to hear Franz's beautiful music, they formed an orchestra. Because a man had practiced since he was a kid, practice, 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 he was asked to join. Reminds me of an old joke. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> so you know what? If you have a musical instrument, play some after this book. Because a woman studied night and day. She's playing the timpanis, those big drums. Because many others loved and practiced their instruments. We've got an oboe, a cello, a French horn, and a flute. There were enough musicians because someone created a poster about Franz's music. Tickets were sold because the train conductor stopped the train at the Grand Concert Hall. The orchestra conductor arrived. Oh, he came by a train. I like that. Because the orchestra librarian had copies of the score. See, she's handing out copies of the score. Yes, orchestras have music librarians. Isn't that cool to know? The orchestra rehearsed. Do you know what rehearsal is? That's when you practice something before you actually perform it in front of an audience to make sure that it sounds good. Because the workers checked the lights, the seats, and swept the floors, the grand hall was ready. Because the time had come, the ushers opened the door and welcomed in the people. Because someone's uncle caught a cold, someone's aunt had an extra ticket for someone special. <laughs> Look at that. Do you see that? It's a very clever bookshelf made out of a musical note. Okie dokie. Because the usher helped the aunt and her special guest, they found their seats. Because everyone was there to hear beautiful music, it was quiet. The orchestra's ready. Lots of violins, some drums. Here's the string instruments, the wood instruments. Have you ever seen a live orchestra perform music before? If you haven't, I highly recommend it. It's a very beautiful experience. And there they are playing their music. And to the artist that drew this picture, this is what the sound looked like. Ooh. Beautiful music. In row C, C, seat 14, sat the girl with the uncle's ticket. She heard the beautiful music written by the man named Franz. And it changed her. 
I think his last name was List. The girl was changed. She was riding on a wave of music. You see all those people? They look thrilled that they got to see that. And her life changed because of this. Music can change your life for the better. From that moment on, the girl learned everything she could about music. Soon she started to write music too. Do you see her conducting, conducting her symphony with her toys and stuffed animals? She started to write music. She was playing the piano. She started playing the violin and she started playing the flute also because like Franz, the young woman had something to share. And that was her music. Over time, the woman became, the little girl grew up, she became a woman and she became very good because she worked very hard. There she is as a young, as a young woman. One night her music was discovered because she was also very lucky. See, she was inspired by that concert when she was a little girl and look what happened, changed her life. And it helped to shape her life too. She was invited to perform her music at the Grand Concert Hall because so many people wanted to hear it. Her composition was dedicated to the uncle in, in row C, seat 14, because it was his ticket that brought her here in the first place. That's very sweet. There's the aunt and uncle right there. I hope he's feeling better. And that night, someone else was changed. That little girl, our little boy. The world premiere of Symphony Number no. 1 called The Cold. <laughs> that is how it happens. Yay, music! And here's the actual score from that song that she wrote called The Cold. And apparently her name was Hillary Purrington. I wonder if she was a kitty. Purrington. Do we have time for one more story? I'm not asking that of anyone. I'm just saying that to the air. So air, do we have time? <laughs> okay, so here is our last story. Uh, it's called Crab Cake. Boy, that's a big crab cake. Turning the tide together. Wow, this, this, look at this. Do you see all the cake? <laughs> ocean it's inside a bunch of jellyfish oh wow what a wonderful story this book was written by nobody apparently because it doesn't have anybody's name on it so i wrote this book <laughs> it's written by andrea sarumi and she must have drawn it too so it was written and illustrated by andrea andrea surumi and she dedicated it to her family under the sea where the sunlight touches sand lies a place that's home to many incredible creatures clownfish hides in the stinging anemone All right see that clownfish over there there's the anemone manta ray gets cleaned by little crabs or little shrimp and sea turtle holds her breath. The tang swim in schools for protection. And the scallop does loop-de-loops. That's how it moves under the water. And the crab bakes cakes. What? Yeah, I guess the crab is the baker. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I think... This scallop is eating a chocolate chip cookie, if I am not mistaken. And those look like little muffins over there resting on a, a baking rack. Seahorse pretends to be seaweed. Spiny lobster looks for a new home. Parrotfish crunches coral and poops sand. Dolphin blows bubble rings. The toadfish sings. The pufferfish puffs up. The octopus hides in a coconut. 
and moray eel pop out of her cave, probably for a little snack. Oh, that's another really cake. And crab bakes cakes. Look at all those cakes. They're very beautifully decorated. Do you see that little piece of coral sticking out of that one? Some seaweed over there. Just gorgeous cupcakes. Snapper eats and eats and eats, and the venomous lionfish does whatever she pleases. See everybody looking at her like, please don't eat me. <laughs> That's a beautiful illustration, I tell you. You see everybody else having everybody else for lunch? And crab bakes cakes. That fish is going, what is that? A cupcake? I don't want a cupcake, I want to eat you. But crab bakes cakes, so that's what happens. So life goes on under the sea. See all the things that are happening over here, all the beautiful colors. And then over here, what is crab doing? Crab is baking, adding some ingredients. All the other little crabs are helping to stir the batter. Until one night, there's a big splash. What is that? What is all that? You know what that is? That's junk. Do you know who it comes from? Us. Oh, that doesn't look like stuff you can make a cake out of, does it? Nah. That's very, very sad. And look what's now on the bottom of the ocean. A big pile of our junk. That makes me very sad. And the fish and the turtle and the little crab are all like, what the heck is that? How would you like it if somebody came and dumped a big pile of junk in the place that you lived? I don't think you would like that. And crab? What did crab do? Crab baked a cake. <laughs> so all the fish are hiding out in the junk. And what does crab do? Crab bakes a cake. What's going on? Shh. Did, did crab just bake a cake? Hide! For how long? I don't know. Crab did! Crab baked a cake! Can I have some? Sure! What is going on on this page? Okay, so this little fish just had a bite of cake and it said, burp. May I? Of course. Can I have the part with the shell? Of course. Uh, it's everywhere. Finally, everyone came together and they were saying, it was scared, it was loud. We have to help the kelp. The cake is good, we have to think of something. Glad we're all here. Whew, you're okay. What now, that was awful. They're talking about that giant pile of junk that was dropped into their sea, to their home. All right, anyone have any ideas? They're all thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Wait, the octopus raises one of its eight hands because it has an idea. Lobster lifts, snapper shoves, clownfish rolls, manta rays move, turtles tow, dolphins drag, clan, I'm sorry, clam encourages, with clapping, octopus inks, sharks carry, and sea lions lug. Looks like they're moving all that junk around. Tires and old cans and just junk. Everyone helps. And they dumped it on the dock. And they made a sign that the octopus used the ink for. And it says, come get your junk to the people. I think that's probably the best idea. And I hope I didn't skip a page, but let me just, oh, sorry. Under the sea where sunlight still touches sand, Incredible creatures go on swimming, playing, and doing what they do without all that junk. And you know what crab does? I bet, I bet you can guess what crab does. 
He bakes cakes. <laughs> Yay! So the moral of this story, kids, is please don't trash the ocean. It's a beautiful place. Lots of people live under it, and we have to respect them. And we love to swim and not have a lot of junk on the beach. So if you see stuff on the beach, clean it up. How's that for a good idea? Okay, so this craft, what do you think these are? Oh, I don't know. Looks like a bee to me. This bee, I don't know who I'm showing. <laughs> I'm just, it's flying. That's right. So cute. What you're going to need is three different colors, white, yellow, and black. White for the wings, yellow for the body and the head, and black for the stripes. Now you could draw stripes on with a magic marker, but I think it's more fun to do strips of paper. So, and then you're gonna need a little black triangle for the tail, and then we're gonna draw in the eye and the smile, and you're gonna need two teardrop shapes for the wings. And we don't need our paper plate for this. We're just holding the bees on the plate. So first thing I'm going to do is cut out the strips. Now, probably going to need about, like let's say, like that length of strip. So I'm just going to draw, excuse me, the bee wants to follow me. Let's just draw a box about yay long. And I'm just going to come down in relatively straight strips down there. I'll fix it with, with my cutting if they're not exactly straight. So three for each B. One, two, three. Four. And five. And six. And then we'll get our scissors. And cut this out. Right, that's why it's always good to save construction paper because, look, we did two crafts with it already. Yay! So I'm just going to cut out my six strips. And they don't have to be exactly the same, but close to. So the B stripes look somewhat even. And here's the last one. Okay. Let's see what they look like. Yeah, they look pretty good. We'll put that one aside because we don't need it. So here's our six stripes. We can put them up there. Then we're going to do the body of the bee. I'm going to use this one as a template. So the body is about yay big. And then We'll make an, you can make them as big or as little as you want to. It's your B. So we might even make a smaller one. And it's not a perfect circle. It's more of an a elliptical circle. And then if you want to make two heads, there's one for the smaller one. And there's one for the bigger one. And now we're going to get to cutting. Kids, please get an adult to help you with your, your cutting if you need help. Please don't try to use scissors on your own. And here's the body of the smaller bee. So now we're done with the head of the, the bigger bee, and we'll match up our bodies and our heads. Here's 
a body, and here's a head. Here's King, a body, and here's a head. And we're gonna do wings. Now wings, just looking at the size of these wings, they look like teardrops or raindrops. So you're gonna kinda come out and do like that. And then you could do them on the bottom of this piece of paper here. There you go. All right, turn that B over. So the first thing you want to do is uh, wrap the, actually the first thing you want to do is attach the head. So you look for the side that you've, your pencil marks are and you're going to put those face down. And you're going to put the head face up with the pencil marks and get a little bit of glue. You can make like a little semicircle here for where the head is going to attach to the body, and pretty much like right there, and just make sure glue isn't, and there's your little B, B body, B head. Now this one doesn't have a separate head, but I'm gonna make one for the second one, just cause, just cause. Again, I'm d doing it on the side of my pencil mark. Doing a little bit of glue on the corner there. And there's the littler B body. If you have a little extra glue, just take a piece of paper and just wipe it off there. And we're just gonna um, just let it sit here for a second. All the glue does its magic. And then <clears throat> you take one stripe, put it very close to the head, and you wrap the stripe around like that. And maybe here I would like to use the glue stick actually, because I think that it would be uh, better if it had glue stick as opposed to uh, glue. I think the glue is a little too messy. So you can put glue stick on the sides that you're gonna wrap around and then simply fold those over. Give them a little press and that's your first stripe. And then take the second stripe, leave some room in between so that it is indeed a stripe. Oop, doing it backwards, sorry. You know, right about there. You can use your finger to hold it down so it doesn't move while you're putting the, the glue on it. And there's your second stripe. How cute is that? And we'll take one more stripe. Maybe we'll cut this one down a little bit since it's getting going to have to cover a, a shorter distance. Put that one there, leaving a little space. Get your glue ready. Oops, flap those over.
Well, maybe you want to make it come in because it's on a on an angle right there. You could do that, no problem. It's, it'll still look like a stripe on the other side. Voila. So there you go. Then you could do your, uh, let's do our eyes and our mouth. So here's your B eye and your B smile. Oops. And your little B wings. You, want, you don't want the pencil marks to show, so make sure that you put the glue on the side that the pencil marks are not. And I'm going to use Elmer's on this one. And you want to do it, again, about a third of the way up because you want the wings to show. And for this one, just kind of determine where you want your wing to be. That looks like a good place for a wing. And there's the other wing. Get rid of the excess glue. Let it dry a little bit. Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot our tail. So we're gonna get a little piece of paper here. And I'm just gonna cut out a triangle. Don't really have to draw that because it's not that complicated and put glue stick on about a third of that and get that going over there. Now mine really has a, a stinger. <laughs> Showing all the people that look upside down. And there's your B. I'm not gonna do this one because th this one I'm gonna leave you to do because we've already shown you how to do one. Thank you so much for watching our craft today, and please come back for next week's, next week's story time, and I hope you guys are going to participate in our summer reading program. Thank you from Bridgeton Library. I'm Miss Adaria. Have a great day.